Greetings to you all and welcome! I am Artsega Omega, going to be bringing you another Let's Play. This time we're going to be going through Micro Machines. And in case you missed it, allow me to reset the game momentarily. According to Codemasters, this game is absolutely brilliant! Right there. Apparently they're very proud of this achievement. So, Micro Machines. It's a popular toy. Hopefully you're aware of this, if you're not, there you go, it's a popular toy. And this game is based on the toy. The idea of this game, the gimmick if you like, is that we're going to be racing around tracks that a child would make with their Micro Machines toys. So in other words, we're very small going around everyday obstacles. You'll get the idea when I start up the game. Another bit of housekeeping to do, this game I am playing through is on the Mega Drive, aka the Genesis, if you live in the States. This game was released for a lot of different consoles. Back in the day, I played this on the Amiga. There's something you don't see cropping up too much nowadays, good old Amiga. But it's, you know, it exists on the Mega Drive, it exists on the Amiga, I believe it's on the SNES and the NES as well. It's all over the place. If you want to pick it up for yourself, it doesn't matter which one you grab, they're all the same. Anyway, onward with the game. So, one player, two player functionality. Take a wild guess which way we're going. And we're presented with two different game modes. We need to notice there's no difficulty setting per se. I'll explain the only semblance of difficulty you get in this game. That's coming up. But we have two different game modes to go through. Head to head is an odd one. Head to head is really intended for two player, in my opinion. You can play it versus the computer. But really it's intended for playing as another human. It's a very nifty little idea they have that lets you play two player at a game versus without split screen. It's very nice. I will demonstrate it at a later point. The main book for the game is to be found in Challenge. That's where we're headed. Now, who do I want to be? We have to pick an avatar to represent us throughout the series of races coming up. And here are each of the people. Now then, everyone has a name. Funny that. And everybody has a rating. We have Spider, he's Ace. Bonnie, she's Fab. And so on and so forth. Now, starting from Spider and travelling rightward, the people degrade in skill. So Fab is worse than Slick. Well, better, sorry. Fab is better than Slick. Slick is better than Crazy. Crazy is better than Wild. So on and so forth until we get down to good old Walter, who is dire. Unlucky. This is essentially your difficulty setting. You get to pick your character. You can pick them to be great, you can pick them to be rubbish. One thing is that whatever you pick makes no difference whatsoever to your car. What it does matter is that we're going to have to verse each of these people. We're going to have to go up against them, so if we pick the best person, we'll never have to race against it. That's the only semblance of difficulty this game has. It's ever so slightly harder if you pick Walter than Spider. Because of all this, I'm going to... Stick with Spider. Why not? Really makes no difference whoever I pick. And you'll see why momentarily. But before we can get into the main part of the challenge, we have to qualify. This is really tacked on. I don't see the point of it, but alright, you get to get an idea of the game at least. So here we are, we're in some power boats, and we're going through what could be a bath, it could be a sink, it could be a bidet, we have no idea. But we're driving around it, and there's bubbles all over the place, and I'm just... Well, storming ahead, because the enemies you face are unknown, they're unnamed, and they're completely useless. It's a qualification to make sure you hold the control around the right way, I suppose. Really don't see the point of it, because it's so pathetically easy. But there you go, I have now qualified, and have been awarded three lives. Lives are hard to come by in this game, there's no saves, there's no continues. Three lives is what I get. I have chances to earn more lives, but they're chances, they're not guarantees. We'll do our best to earn those. They'll be coming up. Now then, we're going to be progressing through a series of levels in a tournament fashion. But of course, the earlier levels are going to be easier than the harder levels. Also, as I said, we're going to have to go through every single person in the game. However, we get to pick our opponents. Hmm. Tactically speaking, therefore, Bonnie, you're up first. We want to take on the hardest opponents when the tracks are easy and the computer's AI is ridiculously dumb. Now whilst I pick everyone, they do a rather fancy dance, which I kind of missed, so maybe we'll, uh, we'll backtrack a little bit so we can see the dancers once again. Bonnie? What have you got for us? A little thumbs up waggle. Very nice. 
Jethro, he falls over like a drunken fool. And Cherry does some kind of zombie montage. Very nice. We're going to go up against the best ones first, and we get a look at the, I suppose, the closest thing to a, uh, a scoreboard. I don't know what to call it. Every one of these cells indicates a race that we need to do. It seems that we're randomly starting off somewhere in the middle over on the right hand side, but while there is some logic to their to their ordering, that'll all come clear later. Anyway, I have done far too much explaining. Let's get on with some racing. Race number one, the Breakfast Bends in the 4x4s. Many different vehicles. I'll explain them as we go, but for now, this is our first race, so let's get explaining what we're doing. So let's proper race anyway. So this is the idea. We want a breakfast table. Some filthy brat of a child has decided to lay out a racetrack out of his... Hmm, what to call these? To me, they're Honey Nut Loops, but I suspect to you, they're Cheerios. Make of that what you will. Also, he leaves half-eaten waffles about the place. What scum. Now, your guess is as good as mine as to what the orange droplets are. Some people will say they're honey. Some people will say they're... Orange juice. I like orange juice as an answer, so we'll go with that. But this is the premise of the game. Tracks are laid out in everyday situations, and we're racing with our toy cars, but we actually get to control the cars. So there we have it. It's three lines. Uh, three lines. It's three laps. It's always three laps, and once you finish the race, you get to do a little bit of wiggling to move bluntly forwards. Great fun. Results of the race are there, and. In order to positioning, let's just talk a little bit about that. If you come first, well done. If you come second, well done. If you come third, you look miserable like Sherry, and you lose a life and have to redo the race. If you come fourth, and you look devastated like Jethro, and you lose a life, and you have to redo the race. There's no difference between coming third and fourth. There is a difference between coming first and second. If you get enough firsts, then you get a stab at an extra life. So good to finish first. I didn't talk about the 4x4s, but we'll do that when we race with them again. But for now, we're going on to the sports cars. Now, I detest the sports cars with passion. I believe they have the hardest tracks, and I believe they're the hardest to control. They are incredibly fast and incredibly slippery. Now, this is only level 2, so the track is bearable, but you will soon see what I mean about these things. Horrible to control, and I've fallen off. This is one of the more difficult obstacles in the entire game. It's two rulers placed side by side, with a rubber blocking one of them. Which means you have to take the left one. I don't know why they bothers to put two rulers there, because there is no point in the game where there is a two ruler wide bridge to cross. It's always just the one. Anyway, like I said, the computer skills are inept at the moment, so it should be alright if you don't bash repeatedly into this rubber sharpener combo. Need to get ourselves lined up, that's more like it. And we power forward at a great speed until we see the folder and we frantically turn to the right. There we go. It's time to learn it. Now, Micro Machines is a rather unforgiving game, for being honest, and I don't know why I'm swerving around the road like a drunk, but I am. It's rather unforgiving as far as racing games go. It's really about learning the tracks. If you nail the tracks, then you'll do absolutely fine. If you know when the big bends are coming, you know when the ones you've got to be careful are. You do absolutely fine this game. If you're just driving around for your first time on a track, then you're going to lose. Now, like I said before, I played this game back in the day when I was but a wee nipper. So I can remember most of the tracks. I have had a quick blast through before I started this, so I don't embarrass myself. Okay, a bit of vanity there, but well, if I just kept failing, it wouldn't be much of a let's play. So there we go, I know roughly what I'm doing, and we're on to race number three. And this time we're going to be going around into Warriors in the oil can alley. Now, as far as warriors go, I like the warrior races because I find them very easy. Warriors have one little quirk about the car, they have spikes on the front. Not sure what cars in reality have giant spikes welded to the front, but apparently they're mirroring something. And as you may have just noticed there, if you ran particularly hard up someone's backside, then you cause them to explode violently. This is great! However, you also explode for no apparent reason. This is not great. Thank you for the demonstration there, Green. Yes, I don't know who's in Green. It's probably Bonnie. Anyway, so I can ram into people, which would kill them, but it would kill me as well. Therefore, me killing people is pointless. Me getting killed is terrible. But when the computer kills another computer, that's awesome. 
other quirks of this level. We have blobs of glue. They slow you down. We have oil. You can't turn properly when you're in oil. And also, if you're not driving at speed, you can't get purchase and grip, so you can't accelerate. Much as you'd expect. But hey, we're doing alright. Remember, we only need to come second in these races. Yes, coming first gives us a stab at extra lives, but... Well, you only get so many tries at the extra lives, and once you've used them all up, there's no really no advantage to going first whatsoever. This will all become clear later on. For now, let's just finish this race off nice and quick. I suppose you call this the workbench area. We'll be coming back to it later, and we race some more as the warriors. Every vehicle's got its own little area. Warriors like the workbench. Sports cars always at the desktop school. I don't know. Lots of homework wherever they are. Anyway, that's another win to us and our first elimination. It's going to be Bonnie. The way people get eliminated is, after every three races, one computer gets eliminated. The chosen computer is the computer who's been in the competition the longest. Now, those three have all been in the competition for the same length of time. So then it decides based on whoever came last. Bonnie came last, so she's gone. Wonderful stuff. Emilio, or Emilio, with a weird diseased face. You're joining the competition, well done to you, but I have won three times. Now, I won three times in a row, but you only need to win three times. That gives you a chance to go for an extra life in these Rough Trucks time trials. But that's going to be for another video, I think. I'm going to cut it off here. Hopefully you'll join me next time, and we shall continue.